Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. From the Gospel today, we heard, Blessed is he that shall not be scandalized in me. Recently, we've been told that it is foolishness to consider Our Lady Mediatrix of all graces, or even Mediatrix of grace, I think, a co-redemptrix. Let us be fools for Christ. And let's consider the foolishness of the Mediatrix of all graces. We turn to some fathers of the church, and believe me, there's many quotes. I've only got a few with me today. We can turn to St. Jerome. He says, death through Eve, life through Mary. So this has been repeated by St. Irenaeus and many others. The point is, is that if sin came through a man and a woman, then a man and a woman can bring about redemption and salvation. Thus, the grace that is needed for that comes through Christ, but Christ came through Mary. Thus, all the grace that we need, including the angels made on the very first day of creation, needed grace. And the grace they received came from Christ, and Christ came through Mary. Thus, logically, one concludes, all grace came through Mary. Foolishness. Let's turn to another uh, saint, St. Bernardine of Siena, teaches that every grace which is communicated to this world has a threefold origin. And he speaks accurately. He speaks once again for all the medievals, for all the doctors and theologians down through time. So every grace which is communicated to this world, notice his words, he's using universals. Every grace, not just some grace, every grace which is communicated to this world has a threefold origin. It flows from God to Christ, from Christ to the Virgin, and from the Virgin to us. St. Philip Neri liked to say, to begin and end well, devotion to the Blessed Lady, the Mother of God, is nothing less than indispensable. It's required. St. Bernardine of Siena says elsewhere, the conception of the Son of God conferred upon the Blessed Virgin the right to administrate and govern everything that was granted to the Son. And from the moment when she conceived God in her womb, she had, if I may be allowed to use the expression, a certain jurisdiction and authority over all the temporal processions of the Holy Ghost so that no creature receives any grace of virtue except through the distribution of that grace by the Virgin Mary. St. Bernardine of Siena. It seems to me he expresses this very well. Our Lady is indeed the mediatrix of all graces. If you remember the vision of St. Catherine Labre with the rings of Our Lady On the miraculous image she saw, and ultimately we have the miraculous medal. And the rings were all the graces of the world flow through. So remember the image, her hands are down and all this grace is flowing. And some of the rings weren't being used. She said, those are the ones who are not asking for the grace. Something like that through me. So just as the Holy Ghost worked through her to bring about the supreme gift of God to the world, namely the Lord, the hypostatic union, the marriage of God and man in Christ, one person, the second person of the Holy Trinity, so too will the Holy Ghost work through her for all lesser graces. St. Thomas Aquinas says the fruits of the Holy Ghost may be gathered from the diverse processions in which the Holy Ghost proceeds in us. So we are going to reap the fruits of grace in us 
by the Holy Ghost processing in us. Once again, St. Thomas, the fruits of the Holy Ghost may be gathered from the diverse processions in which the Holy Ghost proceeds in us. Using St. Bernardine of Siena, then we can say Our Lady is in charge of these processions. She is the one that brings the fruit of the Holy Ghost into this world, having brought the fruit of the womb, our Lord, into this world by the power of the Holy Ghost. But she also then will bring out that fruit in us. Another medieval author put it like this. Our Lady covers sinners with her virtuous shadow when they virtuously hope in her. And the same thing may be said of the other virtues. So we see the allusion to the Holy Ghost in the virtuous shadow. If we want the courage to endure this time, the faith to persevere, perseverance itself and patience in times of Advent, which is an Advent-like time we're living in now. And the virtue of Advent is patience. We wait for the coming of our Lord to work in the world in a new way, to overcome the darkness we're under. We need courage. We need patience. We need perseverance. We need faith to do that. So if we want these, we fly to Our Lady and come under the shadow of the Holy Ghost with her. Who can match her courage, her perseverance, her patience, which enabled her to stand fast beneath the cross of her beloved son. Many have shown the power of seeking fortitude from Our Lady, perseverance and patience. Now, I think we can think of St. Bernadette, a poor, uneducated, timid girl who bravely faced highly educated and authoritative men, magistrates, police chiefs, and soldiers, as well as the crowds of people mocking and jeering her, as well as the Dean of Lourdes, Peyramel, and her own parents, all without flinching. How did she do this? She was introduced to Our Lady in the niche. Even all of hell being rising up in the river Gav couldn't break her free. The same is true of the children of Fatima, who were even threatened with death and being boiled alive in a, in a vat of oil. Such things are not possible in normal children, as we know well. Their fortitude, their perseverance, their patience wanes, but it is strengthened and is perfected when it comes in contact with Our Lady. And this holds for all the virtues. And finally, I'll think of one story from the life of St. Gemma Golgani. She was trying to convert a very bad sinner in town, as you may know this story. And she was speaking with our Lord in a vision. And he said, no, no, he's pretty bad. He's done all these very bad things and I've given him so many chances. I can't help him. And then she said, well, I'm going to do one last try. I'm going to turn to your mother. And she prayed to our lady and our Lord broke and said, okay. And the man came and made his confession and conversion. Let us follow these saints' examples. St. Jerome, St. Philip Neri, St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Bernardine of Siena. The list is long. It's all the saints. Let us seek their example and the virtues that we need under the shadow of Our Lady, the Blessed Mother. She will give us that courage, that faithfulness, that perseverance, that patience that can only come with the power of the Holy Ghost processing in us. She will fortify us and strengthen us with these virtues that we need to continue to persevere in serving her divine Son. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.